Hello gang, it's your boy Amuli, now check this shit out man. Now, it's that time of the year, the journals, the fans, everybody's arguing who should win the Ballon d'Or, who deserves to win that shit. And this series speak too, you feel me, because this shit is open than ever, and 30 men has been nominated for this year's Ballon d'Or. We finna take a look at the 4 players who realistically have a chance of winning this thing, and we finna see how they fare against each other. Cause, let's be honest man, in that list man, there's mandem like Mares, Azucleta, Foden, Kane, who won't win this shit? Anyways though, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, we finna hit this shit in no particular order. So, let's start with N'Golo Kante. Now, the argument for Kante is, last year he won the Champions League with Chelsea, and he was one of the match in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the final himself. And arguably, he was Chelsea's best player that year. In the Premier League as well, he helped Chelsea finish in the top four, and that's a big achievement considering where Chelsea were in the winter. The argument against the homie though, is the fact with France, he was nothing special in the Euros, you feel me? He was an average Joe, and even though he wasn't to blame for France embarrassing defeat to Switzerland, that shit will weigh against him. Especially when the journals, the coaches, and the captains vote for the winner. Now, having said that though, Kante's manager, Thomas Tuchel, has been preaching and claiming Jorginho is instead the worthy winner. Now, even though Kante has been slightly better overall than Jorginho with Chelsea, and don't get me wrong by the way, Jorginho was lit for Chelsea as well, the fact that Jorginho played a crucial role in helping Italy win the Euros will automatically give Jorginho the edge over Kante. Now, some keyboard warriors are saying, wait, hold up, man, hold up. How are you going to give this Ballon d'Or to Jorginho when he wasn't even the best player in the Chelsea team? And let's not even forget, it was Mason Mount who got voted player of the year for Chelsea at the end of last season. Now, moving on from the Chelsea Goonies though, another favorite for this Ballon d'Or is none other but the GOAT, Messi himself. Now, when you look at the stats, Messi last year played 47 games and scored 38 goals plus 14 assists across all competitions. Last season, he basically carried Barca on his back. Now, look at Barca, man. Look at these motherfuckers, man. They're looking homeless without him. But anyways, man, on top of this shit, he won the Copa America with Argentina, helping his country to the first Copa America after 32 freaking years. Now, that's some Ballon d'Or material. But the thing that weighs against Messi is the fact that Barca had a lame season in the La Liga and in the Champions League, where they got spanked in the last 16 at the hands of PSG. And in La Liga, man, simply they just flopped. Now, they did win the Copa del Rey and Messi scored a mad goal, but nevertheless, this leaves Messi with a stain. Now, last but not least, we got Lewandowski. First thing first, everybody knows last year Lewandowski was robbed from the Ballon d'Or. Those FIFA folks, man, they did my guy dirty, man. They refused to hand him the damn trophy on Zoom. Lewa was the fucking top scorer in every competition as Bayern Munich won the treble. But anyhow, man, even if Bayern didn't win the treble last season, Lewa managed to score a mad 48 goals and 9 assists in just 40 games. He managed to break Jared Muller's 49 year old record when he managed to score over 40 goals in one season in the Bundesliga. 41 to be exact. In the Euros, Lewa did what he could, man. And much you could do with that bunch, but it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? At least he was in the field ready to fight with the farmers, you feel me? Now, those are definitely the four favorites Ballon d'Or candidates this year. Some people claiming De Bruyne might have an outside chance, even Benzema. But let's be honest, man, he's one of these four who's gonna win this shit. And gang, I'ma be honest with y'all, man. This Ballon d'Or criteria is confusing sometimes, you feel me? Cause sometimes they give this shit based on the individual performances of players sometimes on collective achievements, and sometimes on the performance of a player on a major international tournament like the World Cup and the Euros. Like, for example, man, I'm gonna give you an example. Like Messi in 2010. Schneider hit a treble and went to the World Cup 2010 final as a co-top scorer. And I say this shit because there were a, a bunch of motherfuckers who finished with the same number of goals. But anyhow, Messi still ended up winning this shit because individually he was the better player that year, hitting 60 goals and becoming the first player since 94 to win Ballon d'Or without appearing in a World Cup final. At the same time, we can see another opposite example. In 2006, we saw the contrary. Cannavaro won the Ballon d'Or based on his performances in the World Cup, but individually Eto had a better season, hitting 34 goals and 10 assists as he won the Champions League and the La Liga. Yeah, see my point now? So, this year, man, it depends what, what they're looking at. If they're looking at who performed better in major tournaments, Jorginho and Messi would be definitely favorites because they had better tournaments in the Copa America and the Euros. But if they saw individually who had a better season, it would be Lewandowski considering his goals and assists and the, and the record he broke. So this year is quite open, you feel me? 
But who y'all think, man? Who y'all think should be the winner of this year's Ballon d'Or? Thinking from an objective point of view, who y'all think deserves this shit, man? Let me know your thoughts on the comment box. It's your boy Yamuli. Like, subscribe. It's lit.